One of the single best experiences in Star Citizen is the experience of flight, and a couple of good joysticks and a throttle can bring it to the next level. But what about what it's attached to? You know, when I think about upgrading my gaming PC setup, the first thing that I usually think about is my GPU, my CPU, my mouse, my keyboard, even like a really good monitor, upgrading to something that's 300 hertz plus or something like that. I mean, they're going crazy nowadays. The last thing I usually think about is the thing that I actually sit on, which is really weird because this is the thing that really defines your experience when you're having a play session. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this video, I'm really excited to show you a brand new prototype chair from Monster Tech in Germany. This is one of three, and it's one of the chairs they're looking to make for next year, depending on the feedback that they get from me, you guys, and one of their really big clients, which has helped inform this chair. And that client is really cool. I'm gonna tell you more about that later in this video. The chair obviously is not for sale right now. And so this video is pretty much sponsored by them, though they didn't tell me I had to make a video or what to say, just to provide some feedback. So I will try to tell you guys the good parts and the bad parts in this video, like I usually do when I make an architect reviews. And so hopefully you guys can make a really good decision on whether or not this thing is for you. And if you guys like videos like this, please let me know down in the comment section below because this is really the first time I've done something like this for a product. So I'd be really interested to know if I did a good job or a bad job if there's any work I can improve. So anyway, let's get started. Monster Tech identified a really big problem with the existing market for chairs. There doesn't exist a seat that is best suited for flight simulation. And this was of particular interest to the US Air Force, which approached them about designing a chair for one of their rigs. The requirements were clear. They needed a seat to best simulate the range of movement that you find in an aircraft seat. And that's why this back end of the chair is designed in the way that it is. The US Air Force wanted a chair that would allow for a greater range of movement in both their elbows and their shoulders, something that current chairs currently don't offer. Furthermore, they wanted the ability to be able to mount a center stick, much as what you would find on modern fighter aircraft today, such as the FA-18, as well as the F-35. This also meant that the seat had to be delivered at high quality with a good level of durability. So Monster Tech partnered with a local company that had been manufacturing chairs since 1966, as well as Continental Tire to produce a new PU leather that would surface this chair. The Air Force wanted it to be durable yet very comfortable, and I have to tell you that the material delivers. It can't be really well conveyed here on camera, but it feels like nothing else I've ever encountered before. At a glance, it looks like it would be very stiff, but upon closer examination, you find that it's actually a very, very soft and comfortable material. Now, while this is being developed in concert with the US Air Force for a new flight rig that's like a big full sim setup, They've also wanted to design it in a way where it can be used as a more conventional office chair, so they have included some great features in terms of the armrest adjustability. You can change its width, its height, its forward and backward position to get in just the right spot for where your hotas is and for your body shape. It also has more typical features like a height adjustment, which is definitely a necessity, and also has the ability to change the spring rate on the recline feature, which is also a very standard feature for a higher quality office chair. But one of the better features I discovered on this chair was the ability to change the seat's position forward and backward. This is really important for people like me with really long legs because it makes it way more comfortable to sit in for longer periods of time. You can also adjust the seat back height position as well to make it better fit with the position of your lower back and the position of your head. The wheels too have a really nice feature. They can lock, which is great for people who use pedals in their HOTAS setup. But one of the things that really surprised me when I saw this in person for the first time is just the size of them. Check out the IKEA wheel by comparison. They're massive. And I'm not quite sure why this was done, but it does feel like it rolls over carpet and wires a heck of a lot better than my old IKEA chair does. Moving on to the non-standard features, of course it also comes equipped with the ability to attach some brackets for the swing away HOTAS and HOSAS mounts that they have available on their website. The attachment process for their assemblies are pretty simple. All you need to do is attach a single screw with some ball bearings on it to allow it to swivel, and then you've got a second levered screw that you can adjust to fix the assembly in place when you're ready to use the HOTAS setup. And this is really where the chair shines and becomes exceptional. Because of the way they've designed the chairs to have the sticks directly in front of the handles and much closer to the body, their position feels much more ergonomic and natural than the old mounts I had on my old chair where they were much further 
further apart. If you were shorter than me, I imagine that you would have quite a bit of discomfort reaching out to grab, say for example, just the throttle. And this is where the size and narrowness of the back of the chair make a lot of sense because they are so close to my body that I really do need that extra room to move around my arms and shoulders. I can imagine also if I had some buttons in front of those sticks that I would also be able to use them a lot more easily. So this opens the possibility for me to add a bit more to my kit. Speaking of which, we haven't even talked about the center mount yet. Well, you'll be pleased to know that I did get my hands on the center mount assembly to test out. I've been using it to attach my stream deck or sometimes my iPad when I use Game Glass to give me more access to my ship systems. The attachment process is pretty simple. It's got two threaded bolts that hold it in place and then you add in two more bolts to secure it and fasten it completely. This process takes about uh, one or two minutes to do, so it's not super fast, but it's easy enough to take on and off. In terms of accessibility, as long as you're really careful not to sit down too far towards the edge of the seat, you won't hit your uh, precious bits. <laughs> you can just fold the assembly back up to be at hand. However, if you are using a center mounted stick, I can see how this could become a problem and that's why I kind of feel like they should improve the attachment assembly just so that it's easier to remove, maybe a latch or pressure mount that can be quickly detached when you need to get in and out of the chair. Luckily, as you guys probably saw, the side mounts can fold away so that you have a bit more accessibility and you could slide the chair up to your desk as long as you don't have that center mount attached. However, they do flop around a bit and don't stay in place. Some people have said they've used rubber bands to keep them in place, but it's just a little bit troublesome. Now, luckily, I have talked to Monster Tech and they've said that they want to redesign this and they're working on a new one, and so they're gonna send me out that when they've got that available so I can review it. But this doesn't really have too much to do with the chair, it's just a interesting side note that I wanted to share with you guys here. But what about the experience of actually having this chair in my office and using it for a couple of weeks? So I gotta level with you guys. I have owned this chair only for about two and a half weeks, so I can't really attest to just how durable this fabric is going to be over time or how these armrests or wheels are going to hold up. But from what I can tell from the time that I've owned it, it is really nice feeling and it does seem like very high quality. It feels like much higher, higher quality stuff than my Ikea chair, especially when I directly compare them one to one. And I spent 230 bucks on this. Now that's another thing. How expensive is this chair? Well, this chair is going for, well, will go for around 600 bucks. And yeah, that's a lot of money. That's one of the things that I think are gonna throw a lot of people off. However, when you consider how expensive real office equipment can be office chairs, those can go upwards of a thousand, two thousand, to three thousand US dollars. So if you're looking for a really high quality purpose built chair for gaming that doesn't look like it was taken out of a race car, this is not only your best option, it probably is your only option for a chair mounted solution. Because although those office chairs that I talked about can be really comfortable, there is no way to directly mount anything to them because they have a proprietary undermount assembly for their hydraulics, etc., etc. So there's no way you're going to get any of these brackets attached to it, unfortunately. You're going to be stuck with a desk mounted solution. Now, you might ask, why would you want to have a direct mount solution? Well, one of the great things about this that I've noticed is that you don't have the sticks moving independently of your body, especially when you're making a lot of movements. It feels far more precise because the positions of the throttle and the sticks are far more predictable. And this is actually a huge benefit when you're going up against other people in Flight Sims or in Star Citizen, which is the main game that I cover and play here on my channel. Now, style is another thing that might be something that would be your one of your considering points. And it was for me. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the gaming chair style, like the ones that look like they were taken out of a race car. So when they showed me the design of this is a very understated black on black finish, I was very pleased with it because when I want to use it for Zoom meetings, for meeting with clients, it's not going to look like I'm some gamer. I need to look like a professional and no offense, those chairs can be a little bit gaudy and they definitely get noticed by people through cameras. And so I think personally for me, this understated style really fits with my personal preference, but it might not be for everybody, especially with its very narrow profile. That being said, as I talked about in this video, its style is actually very utilitarian. It's not about pleasing you in terms of looks necessarily. It does look nice to me. 
It's about, you know, the range of movement that you get over typical chairs. And I did find myself running my elbows into the IKEA chair because it is very wide and doesn't really account for my elbows going backward. So I've really noticed and appreciated that little design style that they did with this chair. But if the color and the width isn't for you, they're gonna offer a couple different options according to them. Uh, Boeing gray, which is kind of like an off-white, like a, a, a grayish white, a uh, o like an OD green also in the P leather, and a couple of cordon options, let's say like a fabric material they use for military bags. But keep in mind that all these colors are gonna be very military-esque, very muted, earthen colors, because um, that's what they're looking for. If they do get a lot of requests for different colors, they might change that. They said that they're open to changing some of the options. And they also said that they're gonna offer a couple different options for the logo for customization. I'm not sure if they're gonna let you put your own logo, that'd be kind of cool, but they will let you change the color of this, remove it all together, or just have one or the other part of it. And I think that's a really nice touch. It adds another level of quality to the chair. Overall then, the fit, finish, and feel of this chair has far exceeded my expectations, and I just can't get over how good this PU leather feels. So if you guys are looking for a flight sim chair, you're probably not gonna find a better chair out there than Monster Tech's new flight sim chair here. You guys will be able to find this on their website. I'll send a link to you guys in the description below if you're interested. I also will have a referral code so you can get a little bit off your purchase and it helps me and the channel out. But you can also help me and the channel out by leaving me a comment down below, liking and subscribing. Your feedback will help make my channel better and help make this chair better because like I said, they're looking for your feedback as well as mine. So if you guys have any really good ideas, please let me and them know down below. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, you know what to do. I'll see you next time.